my name is Dr. Ash Eckholm. I'm an osteopathic family physician. I've been uh, in practice about 133 years. <laughs> uh, it feels like that on Friday afternoon, I can tell you that. Uh, I do uh, family practice and urgent care. I've done hyperbaric medicine, um, and I've taught at our uh, osteopathic medical school. Um, and um, what happens for me is uh, about uh, 2001, uh, I realized that if uh, if something happened to me and I couldn't practice medicine, that I was not going to be able to make a living and, because I was the product. And so most of us who have jobs are products, and uh, I needed to have a plan B. So I went out looking for a plan B and, and found this fabulous company that took my mission to help people have a quality of life and like expanded it fivefold because of the five pillars of health. So um, we're doing this call so that we can help you to know uh, a little bit about our different products. And I call it Stump the Doc because every once in a while, uh, more often than not, right, Gary? Yeah. <laughs> more often more than not, they come up with some kind of a, a rare disease that somebody has, has, has uh, gotten and they want to know uh, what products. And so I, I, uh, I reserve the right to say, I don't know. That's a sign of a good doc who doesn't know and they have to look it up. Um, but usually we can kind of do kind of general recommendations. For, certainly we, we recommend what we have, which is called the, the wellness home. We'd also like to make a disclaimer that we make no medical claims. Um, these, are, these are all products that basically help the body to heal itself. And as an osteopathic physician, that's really, our, that's what, really what we get taught. Give the body what it needs and it heals itself. And so when I found this company and these technologies of the wellness home, it was like a perfect fit. And, and I, I love the company. I love the people. I love the camaraderie. Um, you know, we have a great time, don't we, Gary? We um, have awesome back time. And forth, yeah, and everybody, uh, everybody helps everybody because our mission is to really make a difference in the world and in people's quality of life. And, and I think most of you may know this, um, but maybe not. Those of you who are younger probably don't. But we're going to have a, and we're in the beginning of a significant physician crisis. We do not have enough physicians to take care of the people that are out there now, particularly my age group, which is the baby boomers. And uh, because of our medical technology, we're living longer with a lot more chronic diseases. And um, therefore, we need to see our physicians um, when we haven't been taking care of ourselves properly. And uh, that's hard to do. I have patients who can't get in for, you know, three weeks um, I, uh, I, I see somewhere between um, two-thirds and three-quarters of the people I see every day are brand new to me, to the practice. Um, and let me tell you that it's difficult, though. A provider is not a provider is not a provider. It's, you know, you can't go from one to the other to the other. So your best, your best um, shot at having a quality of life and a healthy life is to take responsibility for your own health. And Gary's got a great series about self-care. Uh, we really do need to be responsible for our own selves. And what I find is that if I can have folks invest in their own health and not count on insurance paying for something, et cetera, and, and begin to, to, to just take on and do the right things for themselves, that they get off a lot of their medications. They have uh, their body gets younger or stays younger. Uh, they feel a lot, lot better. So um, I, I think this is this is really important for you to know, and it's one of the reasons that that I do this call so that I can help you know if you can't afford the entire wellness home right away, um, that for certain, certain issues we might want to start here. Uh, I always say water, water, water because the body is 70% water and uh, what we know is that we have lots and lots of toxins that we get in our food, in our air, in our, uh, in, just in our environment. Our skin is our biggest detoxifying agent that also absorbs things from the environment. So it's really important um, that we flush out our body and what I find is most people do not even come close to drinking enough water. We really um, recommend half your body weight in ounces a day and we know that if you're overweight, uh, for every 25 pounds overweight you are, you cannot metabolize uh, your, your fat. You cannot burn fat without having water. So um, uh, I think we can go ahead and move forward. Are you going to – can you see the questions, Gary? Because yes, yeah, I can. I'll take care of that for okay. you, if, you right, if, if you like, Ash. And, and I would just uh, reiterate, as I always do, that uh, water is not a beverage choice. It's an essential nutrient. And 75% of us walk around – chronically dehydrated every day. And, and I don't know how we could expect to be healthy 
uh, when that's the case. So, anyways, Jeannie, and I'm assuming Jeannie Z. Dan from Arizona has a question here uh, regarding lactoferrin and says, with endocarditis, would lactoferrin be beneficial? Mm, boy, she's going to stump the doc right off the very Well, well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, so what endocarditis is, is an inflammation around the heart. Uh, around, there's a sac around the heart, and there, it's inflammation around that heart. Um, sometimes it can be from irritation from a pacemaker that's not where it's supposed to be. It can be from a, an, an infection. Um, the thing about lactoferrin is lactoferrin is, helps the immune system of the gastrointestinal, the mu mucosal membranes, uh, to be healthy. And if you also, if you take the bone health, which includes the lactoferrin, um, we help the, the bone marrow to be healthy. The bone marrow is where our body makes the, our blood count, which has in, in part our, our hemoglobin for anemia and our white count that fights infection. So indirectly, yes. Um, you know, if we're talking about anti-inflammatory, I guess I probably would um, do the, the, the bone health and um, I'm thinking about the joint, although I don't know that the, I don't know that the inflama inflammatory parts of the, of the joint go everywhere in the body as so much as they're specific for the joints. Any thoughts on that, Gary? Well, let's, I, I think that it, it would be a systemic anti-inflammatory <laughs> because, I mean, if we use cetylmeristoliate cream, which is basically the same compound, right? Right. right. On, on any type of, let's say a mosquito bite. It's excellent for reducing that inflammation, at least in that local area as well. Um, so I don't know. Tough question there. Uh, yeah. Here's here's the uh, uh, you know my thoughts on this would be that uh, regardless with endocarditis, with the inflammation of the sac around the heart, anything that we could do to put our body back into a balanced situation would be beneficial. Right. And the other thing yeah. I'm thinking about um, is, is that our sleep is very important in our immune system because as we get down to stage three and four sleep, we, uh, we, our immune system runs around the body and it cleans up the cells that uh, need to be cleaned up and it also refreshes and rebuilds the immune system. So putting somebody in a sleep system is going to be pretty significant. Now we, we also know that um, when we use far infrared and magnetics, it helps to decrease some of the inflammation. So I might be inclined to... Um, uh, to certainly be sitting on the seat and wrapping in the comforter and um, maybe even using uh, magnetics over the chest wall, probably the flex. Uh, but those are, you know, those are not super, super specific. But as you say, getting somebody into the wellness home environment where we're decreasing acid, increasing alkaline and uh, flushing with water is going to make a, a, a significant difference. So um, I, I lost count, but I think it was... Uh, I think I was I was two to one, and now I think we're two to two because I think they, I'm going to give them a stump on that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I ha I have a question that was texted me. Nina, Nina Marie texted me a question to ask you, and yeah. she, and I think the listener is on on the, the guest is on the call. Uh, she's hypoglycemic, has high blood pressure, hormones are out of whack, out of balance ringing in her ears, wants to lose weight, has some sleep challenges. And um, I guess uh, Nina Marie says, uh, uh, please ask Dr. Ash what she might recommend for all these issues. And <laughs> that, that's well, I'm telling you, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> that's a wellness home. That's, that's, that's an a easy one. Absolutely. Um, so... Sleep issues certainly are going to be important as, we, as we're going to discuss and as you've discussed in your seminars, Gary, uh, and as we just mentioned, you know, what sleep does is uh, let our body basically heal itself. So uh, getting into the sleep system is, is very, very significant. As far as uh, weight loss, um, basically the, our, our KVB, our Kenzin Vital Balance, is significant for that because of the um, the, the fact that the protein, uh, the medium, medium chain triglycerides that we get in the KVB go directly to the brain rather than sugar, and it basically switches how our metabolism happens. And so uh, we, what we've noticed is that if somebody will just have KVB with water first thing in the morning, particularly for a couple weeks if they're diabetic, 
how their metabolism and how their brain works and how their body functions uh, basically changes. So, uh, you know, along with that, basically what I, what I used to do is I used to body fat um, test all my patients once a year annually. And I was in Portland, Oregon for 23 years. So I had kind of a long-term uh, overview of what happened to us. And what happens to us, for the most part, if you think about your diet, you probably don't eat any differently than you did five or 10 or 20 or 30 years ago. But what you'll notice is that our population gets heavier and heavier and heavier. And that's basically because we lose our lean body mass because we don't exercise. If you don't use it, you lose it. And what I saw with my body fat testing was basically people were, were dropping somewhere between two and eight pounds of lean body mass a year. And so if you do that, what will happen is, is that and you eat the same, is you're going to get more fat and you're going to burn less. So the answer always is to, to, uh, to exercise. And, you know, the, the American Diabetes Society is talking about getting 10,000 steps in a day. Uh, we talk about aerobically exercising for 30 minutes, which can be as simple as a walk. The more fit you are, the less often you have to do it to maintain the afterburn. The less fit you are, the smaller amount more frequently you need to do it in order for your body to, to build more muscle. So when you're first starting, it's better to do 20 or 30 minutes twice a day, seven days a week. And then when you're an athlete and you're fit, you can get by with just an hour workout three times a week. But those of us who are not fit, we can't do that. We can't figure out why we don't lose any weight when indeed uh, we're exercising, but we're only exercising a couple days a week. Now, the other part about that is that we need to be aerobic. And so the formula for aerobic heart rate is 220 minus your age. If you're not very fit, if you're just starting, then you should take 75% of that number. And if, you're, if you have been exercising, then it should be 85% of that number. So your range is between 75 and 85%. And because my husband uh, was a soccer player for forever uh, and, and has been pretty fit um, and was also trained in the days when, you know, no pain, no gain, um, as he gets older, I'm trying to teach him to stay in that range. So what he got for his birthday was a, was a Fitbit where we could set his heart rate. And what he discovered was that he was running at about 168 beats a minute the whole time he was out exercising and he shouldn't be any higher than 130. Um, so that's a very important component. And what kind of what happens, and maybe there's more you want to add to this, Gary, is that when the muscles, I kind of think about it, when the muscles go out and you make them work, they have to come back and they have to repair themselves. And they say, hey, man, I hope she doesn't do that again tomorrow. Uh, but <laughs> just in case she does, let's get some recruits. And so it goes in and it starts to make some more muscle. And, the more, and, and then what you get is what's called an afterburn. So even though you're not in the exercise moment though for several hours afterwards your body is repairing and metabolizing etc so as you exercise because you make lactic acid and if you if you don't know what lactic acid is think about the last time you ran and you got that side ache that side ache is lactic acid and that's the body going into anaerobic or non aerobic metabolism which doesn't burn efficiently and it puts out this waste product which gives us pain and when we have that pain what we do is we stop and if you notice in a few seconds maybe minutes that pain goes away well why does that go away because the body goes into the bones and it pulls out calcium to alkalinize that that acid to keep the body's pH where it's supposed to be. So by hydrating well, by being on good bone health, by breathing well, by keeping the heart rate in the range for most of the exercise, um, we're gonna get the best result. And when you're not fit, going smaller amounts more frequently um, and six or seven days a week. If you, if you like to work out at the gym, the other thing to do is to not do the same body part exercise every day if you're working out five days a week because you need to have that body part able to to repair itself so you know work upper body one day do cardio one day do weights the next etc small weights multiple repetitions now some of the um, and I'm certainly not up on exercise uh, physiology but some of the studies that they were showing said stay in that aerobic range and then for about a minute bump it up and then bump it back down again and that helps to, that helps that metabolism to go faster so um, the tinnitus uh, some people get benefit from tinnitus with sleeping on the sleep system, wearing the necklace, uh, wearing the earrings, um, using which, which uh, is the ringing in the ears. Let's just yeah, yeah, take thank that. you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, using uh, the um, uh, the any the chips or using the headband with some of the magnetics uh, around it. 
Um, one of the things that happens that causes tinnitus or ringing in the ears is the fact that, that we damage those ear, those ear nerves. And if, if, I, if I could give anybody a warning who has got any kind of ringing in their ears, it's always, always, always bring um, hearing protection with you. Always have it with you. Uh, you should have it when you use um, gardening, uh, lawn mowers, uh, um, blowers, that type of thing. When you go to a concert, when you're someplace where the, the noise is loud, if you happen to do, go to a shooting range, etc., you always need to be prepared because once that nerve is damaged, it is more easily damaged. And I get to experience that with my husband also because he worked uh, uh, for Anheuser Busch in the in the heavy machinery, and they they did wear hearing protection, but I don't know that it was all that great back then, and so he has some damage to his ears. So it's like no, we don't go anywhere without having hearing protection. It's got to put it in. Very very important as far as prevention goes. So sleep and very, and very sleep important on a Zoom call. Tinnitus. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jerry. No, I'm just making a joke. Very important on a Zoom call to have hearing. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so any anything else about that exercise metabolism you want to throw in? Um, uh, you know, phys well, phys you know that's it's uh, again just going back to putting your body back into balance, giving it the tools. Exercise metabolism, exercise physiology is a fascinating aspect of physiology, and we really. When we tear those muscle fibers down, we don't rebuild them until we have uh, good quality sleep, good hydration. It's it's very it's a tough thing to do. People trying to be fit if they aren't really providing their body the tools to rebuild those muscle or add more lean muscle. Uh, it's pretty self defeating exercise, if you will, to, to use a not yeah, make a pun, but it's you know, much more effective when we when give the body the tools to do that. We have a lot of questions here on uh, on the gut. Are you looking at them too here a little bit? Uh, not really. Okay. Um, All right. Let me make one well, more comment about the exercise. So, it, okay. so that particular person had sleep issues. But what I would say is if you are going to exercise and you do, even if you don't have sleep issues, having the sleep system is going to have you recuperate better, keep you in an alkaline environment so that your body can do it what it needs to do sure. quick, better, more efficiently. So uh, anybody uh, exercising should really be sleeping in the sleep system. Yeah. Okay. And, okay. and I think for uh, the multitude of issues that she's experiencing here in the wellness home, just get started. Start yeah. more and build you know, towards it so right you know the other the other thing we might mention as far as somebody who's got a something going on immunity wise or inflammation wise is that our siaga and our um, our immunity would also be nutritionals to add to uh, to help to help with that yeah. and we're we are assuming that the person with pericarditis is uh, also being taken care of by western medicine that's not anything that one wants to not have western medicine involved in because sure. You can get into arrhythmias and you can die from it. So, uh, so with, this would be just a supportive, which is exactly what all of our technologies are about: is supporting the body to heal itself. All right. So, there's a number of gut questions here, digestive problems. I'm going to try and just to save time, uh, put them together for you. <laughs> all, right? all right. So, somebody, so somebody's asking, can you, what can you suggest for gas pains? Uh, another question here is, have you ever? observed anybody uh, have being compromised in the gut with GERD with Pimag water and recommendations for dealing with the diverticulitis. diverticulitis thank you. Um, the, I think, let's put all those together because uh, I don't think specific, I think they're all basically stemming from the same type of issues or problems. Okay, y yes yeah. and no. What was the yeah. first one? The first one was... Gas, gas, oh, gas, gas. Okay, yeah. so... So uh, a lot of times gas can be because the body, uh, by the age of 50, we lose 50% of our digestive enzymes, okay? So we no longer can break our food down so it can be absorbed by the body. And, um, and so what will happen is if we can't do that, if we can't break it down, then the, the side effects of that breakdown are going to be gas. So the first thing that I would do is I would see, I would try our digestive enzyme. It's really fabulous. I mentioned it a couple weeks before, I think. When they, when they created it, they, they, they went in and they, they put digestive enzymes for all four of the food groups. I used to be able to prescribe a digestive enzyme. <coughs> Excuse me. There are none anymore. If there are, it's just a, a single digestive enzyme or lactate that you can buy over the counter for people who don't digest milk protein. But... 
<coughs> our product is super unique. It's been designed and is really, really good for digestion. So I would certainly go there first. Um, the next thing that, that happens for a lot of people, uh, and I see, you know, I'm seeing 20 new people a day, everybody and their dog is on omiprazole or renatidine or uh, the little blue purple pill, that type of thing. And what that does is it's, it's meant to decrease acid, which is supposed to help our acid reflux. But what it really does is decrease how we break our food down because Mother Nature or whomever designed us, designed us to have that high acid content in our stomach so we could break food down so we could get all the nutrients that we need. When originally, and still it says in the package insert, that those drugs are supposed to only be prescribed for a month. And people take them on and on and on and on because they have this heart burn or this reflux or GERD or whatever name you want to call it. And, and part of that is because of our diet that's very acidic. I mean, people drink coffee. Uh, the, I mean, the number of energy drinks out there is like scary. When I ask that question, I kind of go, whoa. And if you look at, just look at the ingredients on energy drinks. Look at the calories on an energy drink, for goodness sake, okay? It's, look at the sugar. Yeah, exactly. It's just terrible for you. But those, all of those things increase the acid in our stomach. And um, uh, as we age, what happens is the, the valve, there's a little valve that's at, between the esophagus and the stomach, it gets weaker. And as we get more chubby in our tummy, uh, what happens is that stomach and that fat in the, in the abdomen pushes up and it pushes the contents of the, of the gut up through that muscle and it stretches it, just like if you were going to blow a balloon up from skinny to fat and then it never goes back down to skinny again. So what happens is now it's much easier for that acid to, to reflex up into the esophagus, and the esophagus is not made to handle that pH. The mucous membrane there is different than the stomach, so we get the burn. So all of our food and our drinks that tend to be acidic can be replaced with water because our alkaline water will help to kind of coat that. Um, and certainly sleeping in a sleep system that helps to alkalinize us is going to help us. But the simplest thing to do for heartburn, besides our neck and water, is to take the bed and raise it six inches at the head on blocks or cans full of sand with the lids back on. That puts us at a slant so that all the acid stays down here in the stomach, no matter how we roll. And what most people do is say, oh, I raised my head of the bed, and they use pillows. And all that does is push your stomach up into the, it actually creates the problem. So get the, head, the bed slanted, put the head up on six inch blocks, uh, use our alkaline water and back off of, the, of the, the drinks. Now the lactoferrin gold that we talked about, as I mentioned, it's one of the specific uh, lactoferrins of the 27 or 29 that there are and it's made from mucous membrane of the gut. So I would certainly be using that to soothe the, the mucous membrane um, and, and to have that with, with our food. Um, okay. Diverticulitis. Diverticulitis. Okay. So <coughs> the, the, the physiology behind diverticulitis is in, in the colon, we have um, vessels that come in to feed the mucous membrane of the intestine. And just like the hiatal hernia, what happens is as we age, our, the muscle walls of our gut get, of our intestine get weak. And so we start to get um, openings or weakness where those openings are for the vessels to come in. And we get an outpouching called diverticulosis, condition of the of outpouching of the intestine. Diverticulitis is when you get an inflammation or an infection in one of those pouches. And it usually happens when people um, eat things like sesame seeds, sunflower seeds, uh, popcorn um, where the old maids get in those little pockets and it causes, it sits in there and it causes basically an infection and an irritation and they have to put on antibiotics. They can get abscesses. They can, I mean, it can get really, really bad and they can have to have part of their bowel removed. So um, the lactoferrin, staying away from those mechanical irritants, the, the water, the good sleep, and, and definitely getting down to your lean, mean, fighting machine body weight are going to make a difference as far as those go. Uh, um, helping the intestine to digest by using the digestive enzymes, um, the, the, uh, the Ciaga. And then, you know, let us not forget our wonderful J Green enzymes. Jane Green enzymes are, is a perfect food. So that should be a foundation of everybody's uh, daily intake. Um, 
And then as we talk about people who are who like the caffeine, we can switch them over to the 104, which which is basically one of the one of the best green teas that there is. It's the highest grade of, of green tea. Gives us a nice smooth energy and, and a smooth drop off for somewhere between four to six hours. So we really have some great answers for these gastrointestinal types of things. Um, using the KVB as, as, your, uh, as your, your primary morning meal, and if you want to lose weight, substituting uh, maybe the lunchtime meal, or even better, the dinner meal, and having your largest meal at lunchtime rather than your largest meal at bedtime. Uh, it's always healthier to do that in the middle of the day. And then I would also say that what people tend to do when they lose weight is they tend to skip meals. That's just absolutely the wrong, the wrong thing to do uh, because what happens is when you skip and you don't eat from supper time until noon the next day, you go 12 hours without any food. And I always say to my patients, you don't drive your car without gas, do you? And they say, no. I say, well, you're driving your body without gas. And what the body does intuitively to preserve it, to preserve us is it says, oh my God, she's going to starve me to death. I'm going to slow my metabolism down. So what happens is we get exactly the opposite effect of what we want to have happen. Uh, we want to increase metabolism and we're doing things that decrease it. So small frequent meals, uh, the, 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 the KVB is excellent. I've mentioned before that I think it's still up on YouTube. I, I did the summary of it for when it first came out at one of our big conventions. You can look up uh, Kenzie Vital Balance. You can look up Ekholm. And there's a 19-minute presentation on YouTube that you can share with, uh, you can watch yourself, you can share with friends. Talks all about everything uh, significant about the KVB. And an excellent presentation it is, I may add. So, um, the um, I'll send the uh, I'll send the dollar in the mail. Yes. <laughs> Hey, I'm not that cheap. So, <laughs> so anyways, um, here's a question on the questions, and, and I'm going to respond this way. Uh, please, if you have a question, put it in the Q&A. Don't put it in the chat. Uh, I have limited mental capabilities. And <laughs> at 8 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I, I can only monitor one conversation at a time, please. Um, but there was one in the chat on TMJ. Uh, that's This is uh, – I get this one a lot, Ash. I don't know about you. Okay. Uh, the, I, can, I can handle whether, this one, Gary. I can do yeah. this one. As well, I mean, whether the etiology there is grinding teeth at night or whatever it is, but what do we? What can we do for somebody with TMJ? Because I know it's a big issue. Yeah. Okay. So um, what happens with TMJ is is that this this mandible, this jawline, has uh, is a joint that hooks in up here also. And um, the interesting thing is, is if you're trained as an osteopathic physician, there was a, a man in the 1940s by the name of Sutherland who started to study the skull. And what he noticed was, if you know when new babies are born, they, they, have, they kind of have bumps and they have overlap because they have to get narrowed enough to come through the birth canal. And then what happens is those heads start to, they start to, uh, to, to uh, get larger and those overlapping stop. We still have the soft spots, so to speak, the fontanelles. Um, but what happens was he started to study the skull, and what he saw was how those bones were put together. They were interdigitated, so like the cogs of a wheel in a certain way. And if you look at each one of those bones and you start to put them into motion, there's a motion that happens with the head. So a, a lot of times, and the most significant um, issue is when we have dental work done, and they put a lot of pressure on one side and they pull this jaw sideways or forward and they kind of dislocate the jaw from the spot, from the spot that it's supposed to go into. There's a little, um, there's a little pad in there also. And, uh, or if you have somebody who does um, a, uh, a cap and they don't get it completely even, what happens is that, that, that basically shifts how your jaw fits in there and that, that has ligaments, and that starts to get inflamed and it starts to get sore. So what a lot of dentists do is they'll go in and try to cut off the bone and make it even that way. But what I would suggest is if you're in an area where you have some osteopathic physicians who, who specialize, or dentists or physical therapists uh, who specialize in cranial manipulation, that you go and see them and have them try to balance up the, the head and where the jaw comes in. Um, so you really have to get the mechanics of it fixed. And as we know, our magnetic therapy tends to um, relax muscles and uh, it also helped to decrease swelling. And so a lot of people would put um, some of the magnetic uh, discs on the jaw 
Um, it, it, when we get the power mag back, that would be another thing that I would use uh, to, to help with this. Um, and then we always say to them to be careful not to take a bite of something big, like a big sandwich, an apple, something that stretches this draw completely open and it can dislocate it out of there. Uh, when I go to the dentist, I don't let them work on me for forever and ever. I say to them, work on me a little bit, go take care of somebody else. I'll sit here all day long if I have to. But when they put my when they put my jaw into that position for a long period of time, I go into spasms. The muscle muscles spasm out. And I have more problem with it. So so that's the other way that I that I tend to deal with it. And then I'll go see somebody who can put me back into into balance. Um, so. That's it. It's a really kind of a mechanical thing. You could try the CM cream um, and the and the and the uh, magnetic uh, um, discs or or patches and and the power mag when we get it back, whatever it will be called then. Great. Uh, here's an interesting, almost more that rather than a question, a con conceptual thing here. And and Carol asks. She says when I'm talking to people. She continually gets responses from them saying that our Pimag water, our waterfall water, is too alkaline and that it will reduce the acidity of the stomach. Now, I have to chuckle at this question. I really do because people don't understand the acid-base balance nor the biochemistry involved in that. And I get, get that question a lot, too. So. So, so go ahead, take it, Gary. No, I'm, throwing, throwing, after that one. No, I'm stumping you. I'm throwing this one to you. <laughs> Give me your thoughts first. So. Well, you know, I've, I've had I, and I've had a lot of uh, healthcare professionals talk to me about uh, about that. You know, how can you how can you actually dilute the acid in the stomach? And and you know, with the with the water, basically the body's going to do everything it can do to to keep our balance at, at a seven point three five to seven point four five. Because if we aren't there, we're going to die. I mean, we we end up in the ICU if we're not in that particular range. And so it does whatever it has to do physiologically so if we're putting like I said before if we're putting in a lot of uh, a lot of uh, acid it's going to pull calcium from the bones and thus we think we're going to have uh, 30 and 40 year olds um, coming up with osteoporosis because of all the, ca the caffeine that they drink um, so the idea is is that when we uh, I mean I don't think that we can dilute the stomach's acid the body's gonna compensate when you put something out when in their body I, I find that so ridiculous uh, I just have to chuckle I really I, do yeah, I mean, you put something in there, the body says, I'm supposed to break this down. And so it's just going to secrete more acid. Uh, it's kind of like if you, uh, as soon as you eat, this, this feedback cycle happens and your body produces acid so you can break the food down. And then, you know, in an hour or so, that acid production tends to decrease because we don't have anything in there. Uh, actually, that's a problem for people who just eat carbohydrates that are only there very short term because they don't have anything else for that acid to work on. Um, and so, you know, our alkaline water is too alkaline, not, uh, our alkaline water, um, can't really change the pH, not true because what the body is going to do is take what you give it and balance it out. And what we're really doing is making the body not have to compensate so much, not have to work so hard because we're giving it the kind of things that it was intended to have. Yeah. See, I drew that right out of you. <laughs> now that that's excellent but i i mean i find that sometimes i get those types of questions and i really as a physiologist almost have to chuckle and think you know gosh i mean has anybody really ever thought this through have they really ever done any any investigation on their own uh to understand that and that and that's you know, Carol, that's a great question. If somebody gives you that, I would love to do a three-way call with them. It would be a lot of fun. It would be a lot of fun. So I'll, I'll yeah. throw them all out there. So. so Just remember, Gary, that to get those PhDs, you had a lot of organic chemistry, a lot of biochemistry, well, well, a lot you know, of anatomy. <laughs> hey, all you really need is a lot of persistence. If you, <laughs> yeah, really. Um, so let's see, what else do we have? We have, uh, I'm trying to dig down here. Oh, I, I'll look at the chat where the questions aren't supposed to be because I think we had one in there. Okay. 
I think we need, we want to go back to the letting them talk to us too. That's always fun to have them have to see, to, for us to see what they look like in the morning. Yeah. Us, right? <laughs> yeah absolutely. Uh, well, since I'm new at the, the host part here, I'm not quite sure how I go about doing that. But uh, either. let's see. Yeah, I didn't I didn't take a course. <laughs> we have to get we have to get Heather on the on <laughs> Yeah, Heather Heather apologized. She had uh, uh, some uh, something come up this morning and she texted me early and asked me if I could jump in and she did say to apologize to you for that. So no problem. Yeah. Is there a different? We get. Uh, is there a difference there, between naturally yeah. alkaline and ele electronically alkaline without adding natural minerals? Oh, they got me on that one. You know that answer? Well, there. Let's let's put it this way. There's some things that you add. Certain water systems out there, without naming any, uh, run over an electric plate to try and add some kind of charge or to ionize, quote unquote, the water. Uh, I would prefer to do it naturally. Uh, I would prefer to do it with ions, with minerals, with things along those lines, uh, as nature would. So is, is there a difference? There is to me. That's the best way I can answer. I'd much prefer something that's providing my body in a natural way other than produced artificially that way. So. Yeah, and I would have to, you know, it's kind of like, I'd have to go in and, and get the specifics information about whatever they're talking about to, to be able to know. So people say, well, can I take this vitamin? I say, bring it in and let me take a look at it. Sure. And a lot of times, yeah. you know, a lot of times what happens is folks think that if uh, some is good, more is better. Sure. Uh, and and I, I, I had a lady who, who, <laughs> who didn't want to take any prescription medicines, which is fine, but she brought in her mega doses of, of the vitamins that she was doing. And I, and I kind of went through them and I said, you know, you probably need to talk specifically to a nutritionist, but I can tell you this, that there are vitamins that are fat soluble means, which means we store them A, D, E, and K. And those fat soluble vitamins basically um, get stored in your body. And so you want to read your labels and see how, what percentage of the RDA, the recommended dietary allowance, and I think we kind of all agree that those RDAs are probably on the low side. Um, what, what recommendation it says as far as the percentage. And she was taking one of them that was 35,000% of the RDA. And, and it was an A, D, E, or K. I don't remember which one it was. And I said, you know, you really need to be careful about that one. Um, so, you know, hopefully when somebody is supplementing, uh, they're, they're getting some consultation by somebody who has been trained. I think when you go to, to places that specialize it like in that, I've been, uh, when we did a nutrition biochemistry uh, elective at Toro University, we went to the vitamin shop and, and we were pretty impressed with some of the people who were working there because they had done their homework. I, you know, I think it's like talking to Roger Drummer. He, he really knows about that. And you need to understand that for the most part, your MDDO physicians do not have a good nutrition background. I mean, it's a sin. It's a sin that we don't, and it is getting somewhat better, but it is not a mandatory part of the curriculum. I went to nursing school before I went to medical school. I had five semesters of nutrition from a, a dietitian in nursing school. I had two weeks in my biochemistry course that they called nutrition, and what they believe is because you understand biochemistry, you understand nutrition. Well, that's kind of true in that we understand, we can go back to the physiology of it and understand the cycles that they teach, et cetera, but not necessarily the application of it and how, how to work with people as far as their, um, as their nutritional needs are and what they're doing and not doing. So I always prefer that people bring in what they're taking with, with them. And you know, about 40% of the population takes non-prescription medications and they don't tell their physician about it. And, and that can be a problem. The good news is as our computer systems get more refined, we're able to do drug-drug interactions and checks. And so you might want to talk with your pharmacist and see if they can put some of your supplements in and see what they're, what, how they may or may not interact with your, um, uh, with your prescription medications uh, because you really do want to be safe. And I know I, I worked with a fabulous woman who had a Ph.D. in nutrition. And um, she was she was just spot on when she lectured, when she when she did one on ones with patients. And she found a lot of people who were having 
physical symptoms because they were mega dosing on supplements. Mm -hmm. uh, I also went to a wonderful, uh, wonderful medical conference called Food is Medicine. I've been to it twice, and um, they work at the different um, in the different spas, um, uh, the famous spas. I can't remember. They have they have this internist that will go in and review somebody's nutrition and their disease process. And they're so good with biochemistry that they can take different cycles and see which vitamin or mineral or enzyme is missing, supply that and get people completely off their, their prescription medications and have their disabilities reversed just because that body needs all the things it needs to have that step. And I, I think I, you'll laugh at this, Gary, but I think I told that story about I don't have a mind for chemistry. I'm really good with biology. And I'm really good visually, but chemistry is like over here someplace. And I happened to date a guy who was a chemistry major in medical school. And so when it was time to do our, our biochemistry, um, I said to him, what's important about the Krebs cycle? And he said, this step, this step, and this step. I said, that doesn't make any sense to me because you got to go from this step to this step to this step to this. How come they're not all important? They should all be equally important. He said, well, this step, this step, and this step is what you need to know. And sure enough, those were where the questions were. I didn't yeah. trust him. I just learned it. I just, I just believed it. Um, but, you know, the, the, the body does have, and, and if, you ever see, if you ever see a picture of the metabolic pathways in the body, it just boggles your mind. It will fill a whole wall, all the things that go on in the body. And if we get deficient in one enzyme that is important to have that metabolic pathway go on, the body shuts down. It's like when we put, everybody's on statins. Everybody on statins should be taking uh, CoQ10 because that's part of the, the metabolic pathway that gets interrupted by the statin therapy. So our nutrition is very, very, very important. What you need to know about, about the stuff that we have is that it's in anything that you take, I recommend to be pharmaceutical grade nutraceutical, which means by definition, it must have 99% of what it says on the label in it, in it, or they cannot make that claim according to FDA regulations. Anything else that's just a supplement can have as little as 14%, 10%, 20%. Uh, it, cannot, it doesn't have to necessarily be pure. Um, so if you're going to spend the money, and these are not usually cheap investments, at least go to pharmaceutical grade nutraceutical, which is what our products are. Mm -hmm. And if any of you have been around long enough to have an opportunity to hear the, the developers of our products speak about how things were made, um, you'd just be blown away about the science behind it. It's not the Nikon, in the Nikon corporate office. It's people who do this specifically for a living that we partner with. And one of, the, one of the best examples is to go on YouTube and listen to Annie Ng talk about the development of the bergisterol that we use to help lower cholesterol and about the Siaga that she was the, she's the developer of. She, we just heard her speak again, but the first time I heard her speak and, and being able to go back onto YouTube and listen to her lecture of how everything works and what the studies were behind her product. And then Nikon partnered up with her or, or with Dr. Naidu and, and his research on our lactoferrin and on our, uh, our bone health. I mean, we have some of the most brilliant minds in the universe creating products that only we have. And, um, you know, there's a lot of really good products out there. It's not like Nikon has the only ones. But the ones we have are really, really excellent. And so it's really worth your time and energy and investment. And if you give the body what it needs and, you you know, if you want to get them at the, the best price, then then talk to whoever you're working with and get on auto ship and, and get them coming in every month because you know as well as I do, if it's not there, you're not going to stop and run down to the store and get something. You go without. So auto ship is the answer. Plus in our, in our particular company, you get 25% off of, of products that are on auto ship. It's, it's the way to go. So anything else or are we good for today? I, I think we're good for today. We've got a couple minutes left. Uh, I will mention too, I get it all the time since we're talking about nutrition, you're talking about fat soluble, water soluble, vitamins. Uh, I get the question all the time, vitamin water. <laughs> okay, oh, I, uh, let me tell you, I love that. I, love, I need to talk about that one. I think I told the story about I had this, I had these two kids come in 
I don't worry. I take vitamin water. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's exactly. I had this mother come in with her two children. One was 16, one was 13. The boy was significantly overweight. He was drinking nine Pepsis a day, which turned out to be 2,200 calories. And if you know about calories, you're probably a male, probably a male's basic rate is somewhere between 1,800 and 2,500 calories a day, depending upon how big they are, how tall, how, you know, how grown, how done their muscles are, et cetera. <laughs> and so, so I just kind of hammered them about that. I said, let's look at that bottle. Look at this, how many calories you're taking. How many of these day do you take? And it was, it was like eight to 10 a day. It just was constantly, not to mention what he was doing to his bones, but to his nervous system because of the caffeine. And so his sister pipes up and she says, well, I do better. I drink vitamin water. I said, great, give me that bottle. <laughs> and I had never really looked at the, at the nutrient content of the vitamin water. And it was chock full of sugar. Yeah. And, and it had a whole bunch of chemical things in it. And I said, you know, this is really all about marketing and labeling. And this is not good for you. Yeah. And, and it's why we have, I mean, I cannot tell you how many diabetics I take care of. And they are so complicated. When you get diabetes and you don't keep it under control, your your entire body just disintegrates slowly. You lose your, lose your vision. You lose your kidneys. You have to go on dialysis. You have amputations. You have heart attacks. You have strokes. It is just the dastardly disease. And it, we're getting more and more and more of it because of our obese society. And um, so this is where we're starting. We're starting with our kids who are drinking these drinks that are chock full of sugar. So my, my here's my short term, uh, this is what I, I only have so many minutes with a patient. So when I have somebody who's got too much weight and who's got a, a pre-diabetes or glucose intolerance with their blood sugar over, over 100, I say to them, here's the three things you do. Read the label. If the first three ingredients are sugar, fructose, or corn syrup, do not drink or eat it. The first three ingredients, fructose, <coughs> sugar, or corn syrup. Read the label. If more than one-third of the total calories per serving are from fat, do not eat it. And then I'll say, so if they say a cup is worth 100 calories and 50 of those calories come from fat, should you eat it? And they say, uh-uh. I say, good. If 30 calories are from fat, can you eat it? Uh-huh. So they can get that. Those two simple things completely change the life. So now go home, open up the cupboards, read every label, throw into a bag all the stuff that's not good for you, take it to the homeless shelter because those poor people need the fat and they need the calories and you don't have to waste the food and never yeah. buy it again. Yeah, Ash, that, that is great information. And of course, I've heard you say that and give those numbers and, and that percentage as many times. Can I make a suggestion? Can you email sure. that to Heather so that Dave can email blast that out so everybody will have a reference for that? Yeah, I, I, have to, I think that'd really be good because a lot of times we may misinterpret or whatever. Sure. And I think it's excellent, excellent information. I'll, I'll take it one step further. I had a lady, uh, she was uh, from India originally, I believe, or Syria maybe. And, and so we were talking about that. She says, oh, I don't eat anything that has more than seven ingredients on the label. I said, oh, yeah, that's probably even better because once you get past the first seven, all you're in is the chemicals, right? So we'll add that one. Don't eat it if it has more than seven ingredients. <laughs> and I think we could all agree with Hippocrates when he said food, let medicine be your food, let food let be your medicine. Your medicine. Exactly. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Thank you, Gary. See everybody next week. I'll do my best to get a little presentation going. Well, well, thank you. I also want to mention, too, if uh, I have a new presentation that I'll be doing Wednesday evening on self-care solutions. So everybody tune in at 630 uh, Pacific time uh, for that. I'm pretty excited about it. It's a, it's a new version of the self-care series. So, awesome. Ash, thank, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay. You're a lot of fun. All right. Likewise, sir. Okay. See you next week. Thanks, everybody. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.